friends, today I want to work on some multi-step conversions in stoichiometry. So each time you're doing one of these problems, the first thing you need to do is to balance your equation. So if we look at this reaction here, we would um, we could start with the oxygen. So I'm just going to start by putting a 2 here on the reactant side to make that four oxygens, to make that number larger. To then balance out the oxygen, I would need to have a two here. And then if we look at titanium, to balance out the titanium, I would need a two here. And then that would give me eight chlorines. To balance out the chlorine, I would need a four here to balance that out. And then I have three carbons here to bounce out the carbons, I would need a three here to bounce out the carbon. So let's just, just double check. So we have two titaniums. We have on both sides, we have four oxygens here. Two plus two gives us four here. We have eight chlorines here. Two times four is eight. Three carbons here. One plus two is three. So we see it's balanced. So when you're doing this, um, first make sure you balance the equation, and then we could write underneath that what we've been given. So here we have 4.55 moles of carbon, and we're asked for what mass of titanium 4 oxide that we need to do that. So I'm going to just write here, so we have 4.55 moles and we're asked for the mass of titanium two oxide. So it's asking about this, the grams of that. Okay, so remember, this is gonna be your A. So carbon here is your A, that's our known. And then titanium four oxide is our B. So here we're starting with, I'm gonna imagine mass over here. We're going from mass of A two moles of A, and then we're going to, excuse me, we're going from, misread that, we're going from moles of A, two moles of B, and then we're going to go to mass of B. So remember, we're going from moles of A to moles of B. We're going to use our mole ratio. And then going from moles of B to mass of B, we're going to use our molar mass. And since we're going away from moles, remember we multiply by molar mass. Okay, so if you're using the island, this will kind of help you to map out a roadmap of what you need to do. Okay, so we're starting with moles of carbon. And make sure as you're doing this, you're writing down now not only the unit, but like I said last class, also the compound or element. We're looking for titanium four oxide. So we're looking for grams of TiO2. Now you notice here we have two lines in our island that we're having to go through. So this means we're going to have two conversion factors. Our first conversion factor, as we can see here, is going to be the mole ratio. And we can also look at, we have moles of carbon. We would have to have moles of carbon on the denominator. And we're trying to go to um, titanium four oxide, so we'd have moles of titanium four oxide in the numerator. So if we look at our balanced equation, we can see that with carbon, there's a three. So we're going to put a three here. And if we look at in our balanced equation with titanium four oxide, we have a two. So our numbers are coming from this balanced equation. So they're coming from this and this. Okay, so now we have moles of titanium two oxide. 
let me tell it to you for oxide if we look at it we've gone from moles of a to moles of b we notice here the moles of moles cancel out carbon cancels out and now we're left like i said with titanium four oxide okay so our next conversion factor the denominator should match up with what we have here so we're going to put moles of titanium four oxide in the denominator the only place where you should see a number other than one with your um, with moles is in your mole ratio. So here, this will have a one. So this is our mole ratio, and this is our molar mass. Okay, so now we're gonna have to calculate the molar mass of titanium four oxide and plug that in. So I'm getting my periodic table out, my calculator out, so I can do that. So we have oxygen, 16 times 2. And then I'm looking for titanium, and that's 47.88. So I have a molar mass of 79.88 grams, and that's of titanium 2 oxide. Now we notice here that the moles cancel out once again, and now titanium, two ox titanium four oxide also cancels out, and we're left with grams. So now if we plug that into your calculator, we're gonna go 4.55 times two times 79.88, and then divide that by three. When we do that, I'm getting 200 and 42 grams of titanium four oxide. You notice I rounded that to three significant figures, and that is because 4.55 also has three significant figures. So this is a moles to mass problem. So we're adding on another conversion factor here. Okay, so let's do another problem. Okay, so here we have an equation, and this one's already balanced for us. So now we're going to solve this, and this is actually a grams to grams problem. So slightly more involved. So again, always identify what you're given. So we have 465 grams of nickel 2 phosphide, and we'll ask for how many grams of uridium. So nickel 2 phosphide is right here, so we have 465 grams, and we're asked for grams of uridium. Okay, so when we look at this is going to be our A, the nickel 2 phosphide, and uridium is our B. Okay, so let's look at our um, island. <clears throat> so we're starting with mass. This is always going to be A on this side. We're going to moles. So this is mass of A, moles of A. And then we're going to moles of B. And then we're going to mass of B. A is always our known. We will always start in the left-hand side and go to the right. Okay, so remember, when we're going towards the mole, <clears throat> we're going to be dividing. Going from moles to moles, we're using our mole ratio. And going from moles to mass, we're going to be multiplying. So remember, going towards the mole, we're dividing away from the mole, we're multiplying. So we're starting with 465 grams of Ni3P2. First thing we're going to do is, like we see, we're dividing. Also, you look at the units here. We have grams, so this should be grams. So this, this should match up with this. The formula here should match up with this. The units should match up. And then with grams, it's always going to be one mole. 
we never use the um, coefficient in our molar mass conversion factor. Okay, so let's calculate our molar mass of nickel 2 phosphide. So we have 58.69 times 3 plus 2 times 30.97. This will give us 238.01 grams in one mole. So now we have our mole ratio. We're at mole, so now we're going to convert from one mole to, of one to the mole of the other. So we know that we have to have nickel 2 phosphide on the bottom. And then moles, our B is uridium. Okay, so if I look at our balanced equation, we have one is a coefficient for nickel 2 phosphide, and two is a coefficient for uridium. Okay, so now we're at moles of B, we're at our unknown. Now we're going to have to go from moles to mass for uridium. So you notice here we have moles here in the numerator, one mole of uridium in the denominator here to match up. Remember, remember this is molar mass. Molar mass always has a number one with the moles. And then we're going to have to look at our periodic table and find the molar mass of uridium. So that is 192.22 grams of uridium. Okay, now notice, let's see, grams cancel out, nickel 2-phosphate cancel out, moles cancel out, nickel 2-phosphate cancel out, moles cancel out, and uridium cancels out. We're left with grams of uridium. So let's plug that in. So we have... 465 times 2 times 192.22 divided by 238.01. And that gives us, for our answer, 751 grams of uridium. You notice I round that to three significant figures, and that is because we're given three significant figures in the problem. Okay, so now I'm going to pull up your worksheet and for that you have for homework, and we're going to do a problem from your worksheet. Okay, so this is the worksheet you're going to be doing for homework. So let's just go through one problem here, and then um, I'm going to have you guys start working on this in class. So the problems on this sheet are all mass to mass. So let's look at the first problem. So once again, you're going to have to write out your balanced equation before you start. So we have barium hydroxide reacting with sulfuric acid to produce barium sulfate in water. So this is a double replacement reaction. So let's write that out. So barium hydroxide, we use our charges like just like we've been doing, OH2. And it's reacting with sulfuric acid, and they're giving us the formula. And then it's producing barium sulfate. We use our charges again. And then water. Okay, so let's check to see if our equation is balanced. So we have one barium on each side. We have two plus two hydrogens on this side, so we actually need two here to make that four hydrogens on this side. We have one sulfate group, and we have two oxygens outside that sulfate group on each side, so this is balanced. Okay, so whenever you're doing this, identify what they are um, giving you. So we have 245 grams of sulfuric acid. That is our A. So we have 245.0 grams. It's asking us for how many grams of barium hydroxide. This is our unknown. 
So this is our B. So question mark grams. So this is our B, our unknown, this is our A. So let's start solving. So we have 245.0 grams of H2SO4. And if we look at our island, we're starting with grams mass of A, going to mole of A, going to mole B, and then going to mass B. So if thinking about our island also, first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to divide by our molar mass. Second thing we're going to have to do is we're going to be using our mole ratio. So every problem you're going to be doing will have a mole ratio. And that is why um, I had you work on just a worksheet just doing that because if you cannot do a mole ratio, you're not going to be able to do stoichiometry. And the last thing we're going to do since we're going to grams is we're going to going away from the mole. We're going to be multiplying by the molar mass once again. So you can either think about this, the steps here, or you could follow your units. So we're starting with grams of sulfuric acid. So the unit at the bottom here to, to cancel out the grams will have to be grams. And this will have to be H2SO4. Now in your molar mass conversion factor, the, the compound has to be the same or the element has to be the same on the top and the bottom. And this and molar mass will always have one mole. And then we're going to have to look at our periodic table to figure out the molar mass of sulfuric acid. So let's do that. 1.008 times 2 plus 32.07 plus 4 times 16. And that gives us 98.086 grams of sulfuric acid. So you notice here, sulfuric acid also cancels out. And then the next thing, this unit and this compound will have to match what's in the, the denominator of our next conversion factor. Now this is going to be our mole ratio. So we're going to have moles of barium hydroxide in the numerator and moles of sulfuric acid in the denominator. Now when we get to this, we're going to have to look at our balanced equation and look for the coefficients. Each of these in our balanced equation have a coefficient of 1, so we're going to put 1 next to each of those. We notice here sulfuric acid and moles cancel out. We're left with moles of barium hydroxide. Now with our next conversion factor, the numerator here will have to match up with what's in the denominator here. We're at moles of B, so now we're going to be multiplying by the molar mass. Now remember, molar mass always has one next to your moles. The only time you have a number other than one is in your mole ratio and each problem will have a mole ratio. Okay, so now we're going to have to find the mass of barium hydroxide from our periodic table. So let's look at that. So 137 plus 2 times 16 plus 2 times 1.008. And we get 171.02 grams. Okay, so you notice here moles cancel out, barium hydroxide cancel out. So let's see what we're getting. So now we're going to multiply everything in the numerator and divide by everything in the denominator. So we have 245 times 171.02 divided by 98.086 and we get 427 0.2 grams of barium hydroxide. You notice I did that in four significant figures, and that's because 245 
point zero has four significant figures. Okay, so what I want you to do now is try some of the problems on this sheet and see if you have, have any questions.